money is on the back that you probably asked it a lot. And so that brings us to, to, to the scripture for, for tonight. And it's, it's Exodus chapter 3. And I'm going to start in verse 1. And it says this. It says, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that through the bush, or that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I'll go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. And when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, he called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, he said. And Moses said, here I am. Now come me closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And at this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of Israel has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. This part from Exodus 3, 7. I've heard them crying out, and I'm concerned. And that's who God is. You know, there's a whole lot of, uh, you know, you can go into the talking about the bush and how it didn't burn up, yet it was still burning, and how God was speaking, and how it was holy ground, and how all of this was happening. But the part that jumps out at me is this. I heard them crying out, and I'm concerned. And the word there that God uses when he says he heard them crying, it means more than simply hearing. It's, it has a connotation of a deep understanding of a situation, not just, not just hearing, but the feeling of experiencing it, but knowing it. And so it's God saying, I hear you. To Moses. And eventually the Israelites get this same message. But this is God saying that. He's saying in this section of scripture that he knows their cries. He feels their suffering. And he knows what's been going on with Moses, the young guy who fled out in the desert. And he had a lot of pride to work through. And he did. And he matured to a place where God could use him to complete the task that God built him for. And Moses is 80 years old, tending sheep. And God says, Moses, 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 here I am. And so at 80, Moses finally steps into this role that God has been preparing him for, for those 80 years. So the next time you feel discouraged about your spiritual growth or how quickly you're coming along at something, just remember it took Moses, you know, until he was 80 to uh, be put into action. And so all, all of a sudden, everybody in the room feels really young, right? And so, uh, anyway, that, that's, that's how Moses kind of gets his start as the guy who writes the Bible. You know, not all of it, but a good chunk. And he starts with this experience, and, and it starts with something that is, that is deep and personal, because God says, I have heard and I am concerned. And so whatever our depth of knowledge of who God is or our how long we've been following him or whether we've ever even met him at all, it doesn't matter because that doesn't change the fact that God still speaks. He speaks a language that we can all understand. And he still hears us. He listens. He experiences. And when he hears us, he responds. And one of my favorite passages of scripture that talks about God's response to us is Psalm 18. And I've got it here on the slide. It says, this is from the psalmist David, and it says, I love you, Lord, my strength. And the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I called the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. 
And this is where he starts to, to kind of get real about it. He says, the cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. It says, he made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced and hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy. With great bolts of lightning, he routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed, and the foundations of the earth laid bare at your rebuke. At the blast of breath from your nostrils, he reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. That's hardcore stuff. That's who God is. God doesn't just hear our prayers and write them down on a post-it note and stick them on the side of his computer screen and say, I'll get to that later. You know, he doesn't sit there and think about it and say, well, you know, I don't really know. You know, he said sucks in church, so I'm not sure. No, not more. We'll bless him later. Um, that's not how God works. When we cry out, he hears it. He feels it. He experiences it along with us. And the, the, the psalmist, when he's, when he's writing this, he starts out talking about the cords of death entangling him. You ever feel like that? 